God, indeed, your, your, your word is a lamp. Your name is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Enlighten us. Enlighten us, O Lord. Amen. We all know this, but we can't express our gratitude enough for living in a country where we have freedom of speech. This third commandment, in this third commandment, one way to see it is that God is effectively putting a limit on that freedom, in particular when it comes to the use of God's name. Now, I think most of us, maybe sick and grew up in the 60s, but I think it persists till today, will know the song, The Name Game. Shirley, Shirley, Bo Burley, Banana, Nana, Fo Furley, Fee, Fi, Fo Furley, Shirley. It goes on from there. Well, as silly, but also fun as that was for us as kids, and maybe still as adults, when it comes to using God's holy name, God is actually not joking around here. This is no name game. Along with that commandment we just heard comes a stark warning from God not to abuse the commandment. And however one translates that commandment, we heard it this morning, it was misuse or wrongful use of God's name, or it can be using the Lord's name in vain or using it irreverently, however you do it, etc., etc. We do need to see, we do need to remember how seriously God is taking this. But actually, God, of course, isn't the only one who takes this seriously. I'm guessing that if I took a straw poll and asked people to raise their hands, and if I asked you how often in your life or whether in your life your, your mother would have said to you, do not use the Lord's name in vain, I'm guessing it would be unanimous. Friends, when God when God and our mothers tell us the same thing, we really need to pay attention. Having said that, <laughs> let me acknowledge something I've acknowledged plenty of times. I am no saint in this area. Without getting into details, please know that there will be no, no pretense of purity in this sermon, hopefully. Although what I do know from experience, from my life experience, is that swearing, including misusing the Lord's name, for me, it has a lot to do with habit that can come and go. But it's a habit that I've found can be broken in part by being conscious of it, but also wanting, wanting to stop. And of course, especially knowing that it matters to God. Having said all of that, I'm sure plenty of people, just if you, if you think about it logically, they'll think, come on, what's the big deal with God's name? Well, we get some insight on that, from that great story with Moses meeting, meeting God from Exodus. And it's a wild story with Moses, who had just fled from Egypt because he had killed an Egyptian soldier and left his people behind. And he was out with his flock one day, and he comes across this burning bush, which is God. And in this really odd conversation Moses has with God, Moses reveals some clear worry, and he worries aloud that, that the Israelite people when he goes back, as commanded by God, when he goes back, that they won't, he's afraid that they won't take him seriously when he returns to them in Egypt and that, to tell them. He's afraid that when he tells them that God's going to free them, they'll be like, <laughs> sure, right. 400 years, 400 years of surgery is just going to, of, 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 of slavery, is just going to end like that. Pharaoh, that wonderful guy, is just going to let us go. Sure. It's 
So Moses, looking to build his own confidence, he asks God what he should tell the people because he knows they're going to skeptically ask, which makes sense. Of course they're going to skeptically ask because this is a time where there were plenty of pagan gods. He, was, he wanted to know what he should say. When they skeptically ask him, who is doing this for us? What name? And when they ask, what name? And so he asked God, what name should I give them? God's answer, my name is this. I am who I am. That's your name? I am who I am? That's my name. Or for short, I am. It's pronounced in Hebrew, the underlying Hebrew, Ahe, you know, Yahweh. You've heard that, Yahweh. Now, obviously, I'm taking some liberties here with this dialogue between God and Moses. But have you ever noticed, and you'll notice it in our scripture, our Exodus scripture readings today, have you ever noticed how the word Lord is usually written? It's written in all uppercase letters. Most of the time, in the, more often than not, I should say, in the Old Testament, it's written L-O-R-D, and it's uppercase L, uppercase O, R, and D. All of them uppercase. And if you look at your, your bulletin, you'll see it. Anytime you see Lord written that way, the underlying Hebrew word, if you go to a Hebrew translation, is Yahweh. Oh, a name. A name that was so holy, no one was supposed to speak it aloud. Only the high priests were permitted to do so, and probably just by whispering it, Yahweh and only on the Day of Atonement. In ancient Israel, when scribes, important in the religious infrastructure, in the religious hierarchy, when they were copying Scripture, that's a lot of what they did, when they came to the name of God, when they came to Yahweh in the Scripture, they were supposed to put down their pen, their wooden pen, And they were supposed to go take a bath and change their clothes. And then when they came back, they were supposed to find a pen that had never been used. And then and only then would they write down the Lord's name and go on. In ancient Israel, but also to this day, for plenty of our Jewish brothers and sisters, the Lord's name is taken very seriously treated as sacred, including by Jesus, who taught us to pray, hallowed, talking about God, hallowed be thy name. So back to that Mount Horeb and the desert and and, and, um, God and, and Moses and that odd conversation at that burning bush. Appropriately enough, when we're talking about God, it's not all that easy to understand. And many have wondered whether God was, well, Moses asked his name, what's your name? And God says, I am who I am. Well, many have wondered if that sounds like God is sort of brushing off and sort of annoyed at Moses. We don't know. We couldn't hear. We don't have an audio tape of it. But what we do know is that just moments later, God adds, you shall use this name forever. Friends, Yahweh is God's self-given name the best we can understand it because the translations are difficult. And for God, this name, this was serious enough that in the commandment, We're told that taking the Lord's name actually says it. It says it's unforgivable. I'm never sure what to do with that. Anyway, come on. Seriously? Seriously. What's the big deal? 
It's only, it's only a word, you know, the sticks and stones thing. Anyway, we don't, this isn't ancient, this isn't ancient Israel. And in Jesus, we know that we can be forgiven and we're, we know that our mothers are always ready to forgive us too. Now, it's just not that big a deal, right? Who do, and, and who does it hurt? It hurts sensibilities and it hurts some feelings, but maybe we need to lighten up in any way. Everybody's doing it. Also, you know the word God that's written G-O-D? That's not Yahweh. That's a different word. That's a different, that's not actually God's name. So maybe I can get by on a technicality. Have you ever heard the classic thing you learn as a salesperson, which is what I was. I covered clients back on Wall Street. I was a salesperson. Have you ever heard the basic sales wisdom that if you've got, if you, in your pitch, say your main point three different times? Friends, in the Ten Commandments, God makes the same point, not three times, but four times. The first four commandments, in differing ways, they say the same thing. Thou shalt not worship any other gods. Thou shalt not worship any idols. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. And thou shalt observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. All four say the same thing when you distill it down. Keep the Lord at the forefront of everything in your lives. Respect the Lord above all else. When we take the Lord's name in vain, we are disrespecting and misunderstanding who God is. And of course, we shouldn't disrespect someone we're supposed to love. And even more so, disrespect the one who holds our lives in his hands. Imagine for a second, pretend for a second that like, like us, when we hear our name, Imagine that maybe God, when God hears his name, God looks up. We get God's attention every time God's name is used. And so maybe we trivialize who God is when we use his name without real cause. And even worse, I would assume that God is upset every time that name, God's name is used to be cruel, to damn someone, to damn, to, to especially another child of God. That's going to upset God. And doesn't it also make sense to assume that this is about more than just what we say? Isn't it also, shouldn't it also be about what we do? Aren't we also profaning God's name when we abuse other human beings in life and abuse God's creation? Especially when we're cruel in the name and we actually say in the name of God, do it in the name of God, whether in word or in deed. And especially because what we say, the words we use, it's, they so often shape what we do in life, sometimes unconsciously. You know, it is amazing. Of course it's amazing. When you think about how God has created each and every one of us, it really is miraculous, some of the powers that each of us have been given that set us apart from the rest of creation, all other creatures. Amazing powers. We might even, using today's lingo, we might even call them superpowers. And is there any superpower more super than the ability to speak? Well, maybe thinking about this third commandment 
maybe we should also count among our superpowers, our God-given superpowers, the ability to hold back, the ability to refrain, to refrain from doing and saying things like using the Lord's name in vain, whether in word or in deed. When we find ways to do that, no doubt we make our mothers smile wherever they might be. Amen.